In this video, I want to share with you the psoas bolster release as well as a breathing technique. What I'd like to start with here is um, I've done a video on how to do the psoas bolster release before and um, this is a time position that's usually you're just getting yourself propped in a position to allow the muscles to let go and this is time for about five minutes. What I'm going to do with this is intersperse the release with a breathing technique and then as the tissues start to let go, I'm going to move my position on the bolster to be able to just keep letting the tissues let down, let down, let down. So this is really for people who have, have been doing the bolster release already for at least a couple weeks. So you can get an idea of that letdown. And the letdown can happen pretty fast. So it's nice to be a little bit more dynamic, I guess, and just move as the tissues start to change. That way you can get into your body just a little deeper. So the breathing technique that I'm gonna be using is taken from the Wim Hof method. Wim Hof is otherwise known as the Iceman. And if you're not familiar with him, I would check him out because his program is super amazing. Um, the technique with the breathing is going to be a quick, quicker in and out breath. We're gonna do uh, 30 rounds of that, followed by a complete exhale and then holding the breath on the exhale and seeing how long you can maintain that before you need to take another breath cycle. When you take that breath cycle in, you wanna um, keep your mouth closed, take your breath in through the nose, hold that through for 10 seconds, and then release. So after that, that breath sequence, I'm gonna just check in and just scooch down the bolster until I get to the point where I'm, I'm meeting the floor a little bit better. So that's kind of the basis of it in a nutshell. The first thing that we want to do is we want to get into the line on the back position with the legs out straight. In this position, what we're assessing for is we're letting the brain be able to perceive the before and notice changes as we go throughout. So the brain is able to perceive a change, which is awesome. We get these feel good chemicals. We get the connecting here. The only way to create change is to get the brain in the game. So this is a, a, a way also that people will say to me, you know, I don't know if I'm doing this right or I don't know if I'm doing anything because it is a release position. So it's a great way to know if you're spending this time and your muscles are able to let down. So lying on the back, legs out straight. Notice your contact on the floor. Now for me, I tend to be wired. I use my extensors a lot. So I have a lot of space here in my back, I have a big arch. Now, ideally, all of this should be nice and contacted on the floor. Another part is the back of the thighs. So the thighs should be touching the floor as well. Also, just kind of notice what's going on in the pelvic area. Do you feel more of the weight centrally at the sacrum, or do you feel even distribution on your bum cheeks? Working up, notice, do you feel, again, like do you feel more weight on one side, versus the other as you're up into your um, shoulder blade area. And also when you're lying here, do you extend back? So are your eyes lower than your mouth? Ideally more of that neutral is mouth and eyes are horizontal here while you're lying on your back. So I'm gonna come back up. The key thing with this bolster release, and if you wanna get that how-to in my other video, we're gonna go over how-to here real quick is we want the thighs to be anchored on the floor. So that's first step. So if you lay back and you don't have a big enough or high enough bolster, your legs are going to come off of the floor potentially. And that's not a good way to do it. We want it actually anchored on the floor. So my thighs are on the floor. Take my bolster and I want my about uh, shoulder blade area to be on the bolster here. So my thighs are on the floor, they're still connected. 
The other piece is rib cage. So we want rib cage to be nice and flush with the body wall. If I had it too low, as I come to lay down, it arches away. So that's the other anchor piece. Anchor point one is thighs on the ground. Anchor point two is rib cage flush with the body wall. So as I'm here in the beginning, I need to have something that's high enough for my head that when I bring it back down, my rib cage doesn't go away. So right now, with my block, I actually have to have it on its tall end. So now this is flush with my body wall. <laughs> what you need might change day to day. It kind of depends on how much tension you have. So for me, I have a tendency to really use my paraspinals. And also I have a lot of uh, tension here in my pectoral area. So. We're going to start with the breathing and then after that I'm just going to keep, I'm going to check in. I'm going to scooch down a little bit um, and see if my thighs still touch. So if I scooch down right now, I lost the connection with my thighs. So I need to be here a little bit. The goal would be you scooch down to where your thighs stay on the floor and you don't need a prop anymore. It's kind of where we want to be. Okay, so I'm gonna do the breathing. I prefer breathing nose, nose. Uh, Wim Hof would suggest it doesn't matter, breathe how you'd like. But I've really, um, I notice the benefits of nasal breathing. So I, would, I prefer to go nose, nose with this. So it's going to be a, a more intense breath. And I'm going to do 30 cycles on that exhale. On that last one, I'm going to exhale. And then I'm going to be holding. I'm going to hold for as long as I can. Okay. And here we go. I'm going to go ahead and just close my eyes here and breathe. That was my first set, so already I could feel my tissues changing. So if I brought this down, now this is staying put. So that's one change that I've made. Also, I'm going to go ahead and scooch down a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and do my next round. I'm just going to kind of check in. So if I change the block, I still lift away a little bit, so I'm going to keep this up. But I might change this in my next round and I'm going to keep going lower. So I'm going to do another round of the breath.
readjust, I felt myself relaxing uh, as I was holding the exhale. So I went ahead and I adjusted the head. My uh, rib cage isn't popping up right now. And I scooch down just a little bit. So I'm in my new place. I'm just going to check what happens if I move this. And I'm still connected here. So I'm going to take it off here. I'm going to do one more round of the, the breathing. Okay, so that's the third round, and I'm uh, just going to check in now that after the breathing, after being on the bolster, I've made some big changes here in the front body as well as the back. So I'm going to just roll off, push my bolster away, and this reconnect back with the floor. So as I notice here, I have way more contact with my back on the ground. I'm going to move my hands. I don't know if it's visible in the video or not. The other thing I notice is my thighs are on the ground right now. They work to start with. So big changes happen in my tissue here with the, with the breathing and being in the bolster position. So it's nice to be able, that took a little more time than the five minutes, but it's really great to, especially if you have tension in your thoracic area, breath is such a great way to get into it. Plus the psoas muscles are so, you know, in, you know, fascially connected to the diaphragm. This is just such a great way to let down. Hope you enjoyed, hope this was helpful, have fun.